Good afternoon, everybody. Oh, wait, is it afternoon? It's good, good noon, everybody. Good noon. Uh, I'm Councilmember Steve Levin, Chair of the Council's Committee on General Welfare, and I want to thank everybody for attending today's important vote. Um, we will be voting on intros 1232A and 1233A. Um, these are related to uh, transfers for people uh, in the shelter system. Uh, transfers are a process that are fraught, that's fraught with anxiety and confusion for clients in the shelter system. I sponsored two bills that the committee is voting on today, which will shed light on the shelter transfer process and ensure that clients know their rights. The first bill, proposed intro 1232A, requires that the Department of Homeless Services will create a sign and other relevant materials that inform residents of homeless shelters of their rights related to shelter transfers, including the right to request a reasonable accommodation if they have a disabling condition, the right to request a transfer to a shelter closest to, closer to their child's school, and the right to an agency conference and a fair hearing to challenge the adequacy of the shelter placement. These are basic requests that we need to ensure clients know they have the right to ask for. The process for such requests needs to be clear and easily accessible, and this bill will ensure just that. Additionally, my office has continually heard of clients being told to pack up their stuff because they are leaving the shelter at any minute. No warning, no idea where they're going, and no idea why they are being moved. The average length of stay in shelters has continued to grow in every category. Single adults stay in shelter for, for, on an average for 476 days. Families with children stay in shelter for an average of 520 days. And adult families without children stay in shelter on average for a whopping 773 days. With clients staying in shelter for such a long time, they establish relationships with others in the shelter, they find nearby resources, and their kids go to school nearby. We need to ensure that individuals and families are informed, know why they are being transferred, and where they are being transferred to, and know that they have a right to a fair hearing and to challenge the adequacy of the shelter placement. Proposed intro 1233A would require that DHS provide written notification to shelter residents at least 48 hours prior to any non-emergency shelter transfer, and no later than 48 hours after an emergency transfer, and require, and require that the client be informed of the process to appeal the transfer. The bill would also require information to be provided to individuals and families about how they can obtain important documents, such as their case record. The legislation would also require DHS to submit an annual report on the number of and the reason for transfers so we can learn how often clients are being subjected to this process. I believe that these two bills will help clarify the process and ensure that clients in shelter will know their rights to request a transfer that is best for them or appeal a decision when it does not work for them. I'd like to especially thank all of the uh, advocates and providers and clients who informed and helped shape this legislation. I want to acknowledge um, uh, Councilmember Diaz's predecessor, Rafael Espinal, who was the original sponsor of these two bills, and I, I took them over when, um, when he left the council. And um, I want to acknowledge the staff of the General Welfare Committee, Aminta Kilowan, uh, Senior Counsel, Crystal Pond, Senior Policy Analyst, Natalie Omari, Policy Analyst, and Julia Haramis, Finance Analyst. I'd also like to thank um, my Chief of Staff, Jonathan Boucher, and my Legislative Directors, Elizabeth Adams and Nicole Hunt. Um, and we also, also acknowledge um, the work that the Speaker did on this legislation. Um, and uh, express my appreciation to Commissioner Steve Banks um, on negotiating this with us. Um, do any of my colleagues have any comments? If I can. Yes, uh, Councilmember Diaz. I, I just want to, um, it's no secret that I come from the homeless services population. Just want to um, thank you for hosting this hearing today and to thank you. You don't know truly how impactful the decisions that are being made here today are on our families. Displacement is real, and you know you've been, dis you've been in, gone from eviction to homeless shelter to then being evicted again, because it is an eviction. When a caseworker knocks on your door or security and says you're moving, you're out of here, and you have a couple of minutes to move your stuff, that's pretty impactful. It doesn't only impact the, the adult, but it impacts the child. 
It's a life-changing decision that we're making here today. I just want to thank you on behalf of the thousands of families that are going to be impacted by this. Thank you. Mental health is big. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Councilmember Diaz. Uh, Councilmember Grenetic. I want to uh, add my voice to uh, that of Councilwoman Diaz. Um, I grew up in New York City public housing, and uh, I know I fought for years um, to get NYCHA to stop moving people around as if they were furniture. And um, somebody's economic means should not determine how they are treated. Everybody in this city should be treated with dignity and respect, especially by city government. Um, so I'm uh, glad to support this legislation today, and I thank you for bringing it forward. And I ask that I be put on these two bills as well. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you so much, Council Member Prudential. Um, do any other colleagues have anything they want to add? Okay. Seeing none, I will turn it over to William Martin, uh, uh, Committee Clerk, to call the vote. Thank you, William Martin, Committee Clerk, Roll Call Vote Committee on General Welfare, proposed introductions 1232A and 1233A. Items are coupled. Chair Levin. I vote aye. Lander. Gibson. Reynoso. Councilmember Reynoso votes aye on all. Gorenchik. Aye. Dharma Diaz. A proud aye. <laughs> Councilmember Gibson. By a vote of six in the affirmative, zero in the negative, and no abstentions, both items have been adopted by the committee. Vote clarification, Councilmember Gibson. I vote aye. Thank you. <laughs> Vote is still six in the affirmative, zero in the negative, and no abstention. Okay, I want to thank everybody um, for their votes and um, look forward to this going to the full council. This hearing is adjourned. <laughs>